Welcome to the Physics Classroom's video tutorial series on Newton's Laws. The topic of this video is, what do forces do? And there's two basic questions we wish to answer. The first question is, in what way do forces affect the motion of objects? And the second question is, how are the force diagrams for speeding up objects different than those for slowing down objects? Let's get started. In an earlier video, we discussed force diagrams. Force diagrams reveal information about the strength and the direction of the individual forces that act upon an object. We see two such force diagrams here. The one on the left, what you notice is the up force and the down force of our, are of equal magnitude, and the right force and the left force are also of equal magnitude. We describe this situation as a balanced force situation. When we look at force diagrams, we can figure out whether the forces are balanced or imbalanced, and the one on the left is unbalanced. If we look at the diagram on the right, we notice something quite different. While the ups and down forces balance each other out, the right and the left forces are unbalanced. The right force of 25 newtons is not perfectly balanced by the left force of 15 newtons. We would say that there's a net force to the right, and we would say that these forces are unbalanced. This is an important question to answer. Are the forces balanced or unbalanced? Because it helps us determine how the object will subsequently move. Let's find out more about that. We are going to begin this discussion by discussing what do balance forces do? We have a situation here of balanced forces once more. When the forces acting upon an object are balanced, what we know is the object keeps on doing whatever it's doing at that time. If the object's at rest, it will remain at rest. And if the object's moving, it will continue moving with the same speed in the same direction. So whenever you see this force diagram here with all the forces, individual forces balanced, what you know is that either the object's at rest and staying there at rest, or it's moving with a constant velocity. You don't know which one of these two it is doing, but you know for certain that it's not accelerating. One of the skills that will be rather useful for your success in physics will be to be able to associate the various representations of an object's motion to one another. For instance, a force diagram shows information about the forces that act upon an object. Here we see two force diagrams. In both situations, they show that the forces are balanced. What we know about balanced forces is it results in zero acceleration. We don't know much more, but we do know that there would be no acceleration. It means that either the object's at rest and staying at rest, so one way to associate these two force diagrams is to associate it with them with a position time graph that is horizontal and a velocity time graph that is horizontal with zero slope and located at the v equals zero place on the graph. But you could also associate these balanced force situations with an object that is moving with a constant velocity, neither changing its speed nor its direction. So the dot diagram would show equally spaced dots. The position time graph would show a straight diagonal line either sloping upwards or sloping downwards depending on whether the object moves in the positive or the negative direction. And the velocity time graph would show a constant velocity, that is, a horizontal line with zero slope either located above for moving in the positive direction or below the time axis for moving in the negative direction. So being able to associate these various representations of an object's motion with one another will be critical to your success in physics. So balance forces cause objects to continue doing whatever they're doing at the time, that is to not accelerate. But what do unbalanced forces do? Here we see a picture of unbalanced forces acting up on an object. There's three diagrams, and in every diagram opposing forces are of equal strength, so the forces balance. In such situations as this, there would, be no, there would be an acceleration. Unbalanced forces cause objects to either speed up, slow down, or change direction. That is, they cause objects to accelerate. But one thing we have to be careful about is that when we look at these, these force diagrams that we see here, we cannot reason which way the object's moving. Because forces don't cause objects to move in a given direction, they only cause objects to accelerate in a given direction. So direction of acceleration is going to become important when it comes to Associating, associating the motion with the force diagrams. Let's learn more about the direction of acceleration. In the kinematic series of our physics video tutorial, we learned about the direction of acceleration. We learned that there's two ways to accelerate rightward. The first diagram shows one way to accelerate rightward, and it's to move to the right and speed up. That's a rightward acceleration for an object with a rightward velocity. The second diagram shows the second way to accelerate to the right, and that's if you start on the other side and move leftwards and slow down. That's an object that has a rightward acceleration 
and a leftward velocity. We also learned there's two ways to accelerate leftwards. One way to accelerate leftwards is shown in the third diagram, and that is to be moving to the left and speeding up. That's an object with a leftward acceleration and a leftward velocity. But there's another way to accelerate to the left, and it's shown in the fourth diagram. That's an object that moves to the right and slows down. That would be a leftward acceleration for an object with a rightward velocity. Now we're going to associate the information about the direction of acceleration with information about the direction of the unbalanced force. Here's the rule. When the unbalanced force is directed rightward, the object's going to accelerate rightward. Here's a picture of a force diagram with more force to the right than to the left. That's a rightward unbalanced force, and it's going to lead to a rightward acceleration. This leaves the object two options. First, it could be moving to the right and speeding up. But the second option is that this object with a rightward unbalanced force could be moving to the left and slowing down. In both instances, the object would have a rightward acceleration. Now it's crucial to recognize at this point is that a rightward unbalanced force does not cause a rightward motion. What it causes for certain is a rightward acceleration. Forces don't cause objects to move in a specific direction. They only cause objects to accelerate in a specific direction. So now if we look at a leftward unbalanced force and apply this rule, we would say that an unbalanced force directed leftward would cause an object to accelerate leftward. To have a leftward unbalanced force means to have more force to the left and to the right, and it leads to this leftward acceleration. Two options would be possible for such a force diagram. First, the object could move to the left and speed up, and second, the object could move to the right and slow down. But once more, we have to caution you. When you see more force to the left than to the right, it doesn't mean the object's necessarily moving to the left, because here we see one of the options is the object could be moving to the right and just simply slowing down. Forces don't cause objects to move in a specific direction. They only cause them to accelerate in a specific direction. A few slides back, we talked about how important it was to associate the various representations of an object's motion. We did it for a constant speed object. Now we're going to look at representing speeding up motions. We'll begin with a force diagram. Here we see a force diagram with an unbalanced force to the right. And we're going to talk about speeding up. The acceleration would be to the right. In this instance, if you're speeding up, the movement would be to the right. So the object's moving to the right and speeding up. It has unbalanced force to the right. Here's what the dot diagram would look like. As the object moves from left towards right, the spacing between dots becomes increasingly greater. And here's what the position time would look like. If we assume that moving to the right is in the positive direction, we'd have an object that has a positive slope, and over time it gets steeper. The velocity time graph would show a line with positive slope for a rightward or positive acceleration. Now if the object's moving to the left and speeding up, then it's accelerating to the left, and it requires more left force than right force on the force diagram. The dot diagram would show as the dots move from the right side towards the left side, the dots become increasingly further apart, just like any speeding up object. And the position time graph would look something like this. If we assume that the neg moving leftward is moving in the negative direction, we would need a line with negative slope, but it gets steeper over the course of time because the object's moving is, is speeding up. And finally, the velocity time graph would start at a low velocity value you say zero, and then become increasingly greater negative velocities. So we would have a line with a negative slope consistent with a leftward acceleration. Now let's look at situations for objects that are slowing down. In each of these cases, we're going to notice one subtle difference, and that is that if an object moves to the right and is slowing down, it requires more force to the left than to the right. This is a leftward acceleration, and if it's a leftward acceleration, there's more left force than right force. Here's what the dot diagram looks like for moving to the right and slowing down. As time progresses, the dots get closer and closer together. And here's what the position time graph looks like. Assuming that we say moving to the right is in the positive direction, we would have a line with positive slope that starts steep and becomes flat, and the velocity velocity time graph would start far from the, from the v equals zero mark and head towards it. Now if we look at moving to the left and slowing down, that's a rightward acceleration. And so even though the object's moving to the left, there doesn't need to be a left force. What there needs to be 
is more right force than left force or no left force whatsoever. The dot diagram for such a motion moving to the left and speeding up would show as we go from right to left across the diagram that the dots become more and more closer together. The position time graph would start steep and become flat over the course of time, and the velocity time graph would start far from the time axis and head towards it. If you're looking at this force diagram on the right there and you're saying to yourself, what? you got to be kidding, Mr. H. You mean to tell me that an object that has no rightward force could be moving to the right? You must be totally out of your mind. If that's what you're thinking right now, I'd have to say that you're infected with a pretty strong misconception. And likelihood is most students do come into the course with that misconception about the relationship between force and motion. So I have a few things to say to you right now. The first one is I'd like to encourage you to watch the next two videos in this video tutorial series. The next one is on Newton's laws of motion, or Newton's first law of motion, and the one after that is on common force and motion misconceptions. That second one is probably a must-see if you're having this difficulty, because right now physics could get really difficult if you're believing that objects have to have a force to the right if they're moving to the right. So here's what I'd like to just encourage you to think about to begin with. In your mind, you're thinking rightward motions require rightward forces. What you have to rechange, what you have to adjust, is rightward forces don't cause rightward motions. They cause rightwards acceleration. Forces when unbalanced cause objects to accelerate in the direction of that unbalanced force. Here's a common everyday example from the roadway. I'm driving down the road and I slam on my brakes of my 1968 Yugo. The brakes lock and my car skids to a stop. They don't spin as they're skidding and there's no more forward force because the brakes have locked up and the wheels have locked up and there's nothing pushing that car forward to the right. Yet, I continue moving to the right from that top speed of 20 miles per hour on my 68 Yugo to zero miles per hour, a stopping resting position. And during that short time, what is happening is the objects moving to the right and accelerating to the left, and there's no force to the right, only a force of friction opposing the motion, and that's a leftward force. We'll talk more about that in the next couple of videos, so please join us for that. Well, we've done it. We figured out in what way do forces affect the motion of objects, and we figured out well, how the force diagrams differ for speeding up and slowing down motions. Now, it's at this time in every video, I like to give you an action plan, a way of solidifying the learning to make it stick. But before I help you out with an action plan, I was wondering if you could help us out. Could you give us a like if you enjoyed the video? And if you really enjoyed it, maybe you'd like to subscribe to our channel and get notifications when new videos come out. And then finally, down below, there's a place for le to leave a question or a comment. Please do if you wish. Now, here's your action plan. Action plan. First of all, at our website, www.physicsclassroom.com, we have a section called the Concept Builders. Students love Concept Builders, and they're a fun way to learn and a great way to learn and solidify your learning. So why don't you try any one of these three Concept Builders? We have links to them in the description section below this video. Second, if you're a Minds on Physics user, you ought to download app number two. In app number two, there's three different modules, and the first module is called Newton's Laws of Motion. And if you were to open it up, uh, Mission NL2 and NL3 are perfect ways to work on your idea of what do forces do. So give them a try. Finally, at our website, we have a tutorial section. It's a great way to freshen up on a topic if you need to, so we would invite you to do that. Whatever you do to further your learning, we wish you the best of luck and ask you to stop back by again and watch another video. Thank you.